Apple's new 2018 iPad is undoubtedly the budget iPad of choice, thanks to its powerful A10 Fusion processor and Apple Pencil support, which until now hasn't been available on any iPad other than the Pro line. However, it still has some pretty big issues that can make you reconsider purchasing one and opt for an iPad Pro instead. The first issue with the new iPad is that it comes with a non-laminated display. You can instantly notice a gap around the edge of the display and it's annoying. The iPad Pro screen has a very small gap so it's not distracting and it makes it feel like the display is almost sitting on top of the glass. When you use the Apple Pencil, one of the highlight features of the new iPad, the experience is a lot worse on it compared to the iPad Pro. The gap is quite noticeable with the effect of writing above the surface of the display potentially affecting accuracy when creating detailed drawings. The 2018 iPad also has this weird hollow feel when you tap on the screen, whereas the iPad Pro feels very solid and well built. You can even hear the difference. Not only that, but laminated displays are also able to show deeper black shades than the non-laminated versions. As you can see here, the 2018 iPad's display looks gray compared to the iPad Pro. Even though we think it's worth replacing your old iPad with the 2018 iPad because of the processor improvements and Apple Pencil support, both the iPad Mini 4 and iPad Air 2 have laminated displays, so it's going to be tough going back to a non-laminated display after using one of those models. Next, the 2018 iPad's display is distractingly reflective. Every iPad that comes with a laminated display also gets anti-reflective coating, so the unlaminated 2018 iPad unfortunately doesn't get it. We didn't think it was a big deal until we actually started using both the new iPad and the iPad Pro at the same time. Even though we were using them indoors, we could still see a huge difference. Taking them both outside, the reflectiveness was pretty annoying on the new iPad, even on an overcast day, forcing us to max out the brightness to see what's on screen. The iPad Pro, on the other hand, was less reflective, even at lower brightness, so it should actually help save battery life when used outside. Another issue is that the new iPad still uses Apple's first generation Touch ID, comparing that to the new iPad Pros that have the second generation version. Even before comparing it against the version used on the new iPad Pro, we noticed it was fairly slow and not very reliable. That's probably because I'm used to the Touch ID sensor on my iPhone 8 Plus. As the second generation Touch ID was introduced with the iPhone 6S, you'll definitely notice the difference unless you're using an iPhone 6 or 5S. On the new iPad, notice how we can tap on the sensor repeatedly without it unlocking. It won't unlock until you rest your finger on it for a bit longer. Now switching to the iPad Pro, Touch ID is so fast that it unlocks while pressing the home button to wake up the screen. We actually used the power button to try out the same tap test, and as you can see, it's lightning fast. Just look how quickly you can lock and unlock the iPad. Side by side, you can really get a sense of reliability with the iPad Pro. The fourth issue is the FaceTime selfie camera, which comes with an absolutely awful 1.2 megapixel sensor, only capable of recording video in 720p. This is the same FaceTime camera that came with the fourth generation iPad from 2012. We're in the year 2018, and it's shocking that we still have some devices that are limited to 720p recording. The iPad Pro comes with a 7 megapixel FaceTime camera capable of recording in 1080p, and while it may not seem like a big difference, it actually is. 1080p has over twice the pixel count, and just for reference, 4K has 9 times as much pixels. As you can see, the quality difference is easily noticeable between the iPad Pro and the new iPad. It's a huge disappointment that Apple continues to use such a low resolution selfie camera in its iPads in 2018. The fifth and last issue also relates to the technology used for the display itself. The new iPad is still using the same old Retina display that came with a third generation iPad in 2012. Many of Apple's latest products are now being equipped with displays that support P3 wide color gamut, so colors look a lot more vibrant. The iPhone X has even moved on to OLED displays, and there's no doubt that we'll be seeing OLED equipped iPad Pros in the near future. You can easily see a difference in color vibrancy between the new iPad and the P3 color supported 2017 iPad Pro. Even Samsung's Galaxy Tab S2 from 2015 has a Super AMOLED display, so it's extremely disappointing that the new iPad is stuck with a 6 year old display. The 2017 iPad Pro also gets ProMotion, so the screen can refresh at up to 120Hz, twice as much as the 2018 iPad. This makes the overall experience much more fluid and it drastically reduces input lag while using the Apple Pencil. You can easily see the difference in lag in the slow motion footage. Even though the 2018 iPad gets an extremely powerful processor and Apple Pencil support, and we definitely recommend buying it, the lacking display makes it feel like an old iPad, and nobody wants to feel stuck in the past, especially in 2018. If you enjoyed this video, like it and hit that subscribe button. Also, check out our price guide, which makes it extremely easy to find the best deals on Apple products updated daily. Be sure to follow us on social media, and we'll see you in the next video.